Hello? I was looking for a Coke. Yeah, man. Designing to win. Uh, this is our shorthand for using design to drive our business. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Is design critical to our business? This is really the main question. And before I get into this, quick show of hands. How many uh, business people are in the audience? Raise your hand. Yep. How many designers? Wow. OK. You know, if you walk up to any business person and uh, engage with them on the topic of design, usually that person will say, uh, you know, design is nice, design is cool, uh, design is important to our business, but critical. You know, rarely do you hear a, a business person say, design is critical to our business. And why is that? We're going to talk about that. Uh, but first, a quick story. Two weeks ago, I was in uh, Colombia, Bogota, Colombia. We have a large uh, project uh, in Latin America. And we have uh, different learning labs, we call them learning labs, where we use actual people's stores to actually prototype ideas and uh, learn from the actual owners of the store. So I was in uh, one of these with a bunch of uh, our colleagues from Coke. And um, here's one of them down here. Anyway, um, with uh, some colleagues from Coke. And um, uh, you know, this guy, we were just standing there in front of this, that actual guy and uh, said, so how's it working? Uh, you know, what do you think? And he was ecstatic. His sales had risen uh, 40% uh, during the two weeks that we had had different elements inside of a store. So he was happy. He was offering us Coke and empanadas and all these things. So anyway, he was very excited. And uh, so we started to walk out to go to the next lab. And uh, this guy turned to me that works for Coke and said, you know, David, I finally get this thing. I used to think uh, you know, design was all about making stuff look, I think he used the word pretty, making things look uh, prettier. But actually, I see now that design is about selling stuff and doing it more efficiently. And I thought, ah, this is it, you know, finally. You know, so, um, Anyway, that's what it's all about. But it's true, there's often this disconnect between design and business. And we heard a lot of people um, yesterday and today talk about or reference the fact that you know, a client will push back on a brief or push back on a designer, or it's sort of the designer's job to push the client into a scenario. So it's, it's always sort of this duality, right? This sort of pushing going on. But the issue is all around value. Honestly, this is what comes up all the time for me personally at, at Coke. It's the value. So, Business people want to understand the value that design creates. And the problem that business people have often with design is they don't, they don't think that designers understand the way the business works. But it's always around this notion of value. So that's actually what I want to talk about. First of all, if you're not familiar with Coke, uh, a few numbers here. $14 uh, billion dollar brands. We have a lot of brands in our portfolio, but 14 of them are billion dollar brands. And actually, about three weeks ago, we announced our, our 14th billion dollar brand. It's a brand called Pulpy. And the interesting thing about that is that it was designed in China for the Chinese and then exported out. It's one of the first brands that we've ever designed uh, and then on purpose for China and then exported. Anyway, $14 billion brands, 206 countries. We are local in 206 countries. The Coca-Cola company is, is just a, a group of companies. We have 1,000 plants around the world, but each, each of the companies are based locally, using local, obviously, employees, ingredients, and so forth. So we're, we're just a big you know, uh, make a mashup of a lot of different companies in 206 countries. 500 brands. Again, we have a few big ones, Coke and Sprite and Fanta and so forth. But in reality, we have 500 brands. Now, 3,000 products are 500 brands. 700,000 employees. Uh, we, the Coca-Cola company, and our system of bottlers, uh, a lot of people, 700,000. 20 million outlets. We sell Coke and other things in uh, 20 million outlets. So, in a sense, we have 20 million customers. Anybody that buys Coke from the Coca-Cola company is a customer of, the, of uh, Coke. So, 20 million customers. 1.7 billion. We serve uh, 1.7 billion servings a day. Roughly a quarter of the Earth's population drinks something from our company every day. Serve about uh, a million servings uh, a minute. So, uh, by the end of this talk, we'll have 30 million <coughs> servings. So, we operate on scale. Big time. 2x. Uh, fortunately for us, we are in a growing industry. In fact, our industry is uh, growing uh, exponentially. We, um, uh, because of macroeconomic forces, we see uh, the opportunity for our business to double in the next 10 years. So by 2020, what took us uh, 125 years to build, we think we can double it in, in 10 years. So we're living in an amazing time. How we do that? We don't sell uh, cars. We don't sell you know, smartphones. We sell Coke for 15 rand, right over there. Um, 
And we sell a lot of things, you know, sort of very inexpensively, but the things that people want. So how can we get there? It's, it's by doing this. It's empowering this guy to sell that stuff to that woman. It's a, it's a very simple business, actually, that we're in. We just do it on a mass scale. There's a great quote uh, from The Economist. Everyone should read The Economist. Uh, the biggest winners uh, will be companies that can combine the advantages of scale with the agility to respond to fast-changing market conditions. You know, I read this, uh, I was at home, and I read this in uh, December, and this is spot on. This is exactly what we need to do and want to do. How do we leverage our scale, but do it quickly? Do it as fast as a startup, but operate on a, on a giant scale. This is what we do. And when we do that, we create value for consumers. You know, we design things, we create things that, that create value for consumers. They pay for what we, we offer, value. But it's not just consumers, right? It's our portfolio. We have to create value for our whole portfolio. So if we just sell Coke, we're dead. We have to sell the whole thing. So it's creating value, designing value for Coke, Fanta, da-da-da. But it's not just our portfolio, it's for our customers. So this guy, this guy operates a small business, in Mexico City, actually, uh, operates a small business. So when we create things that he can sell for a higher margin, he sets the price for Coke, right? We give him the Coke, and he sets the price for Coke that you buy. When we can create th something that you'll pay a little bit more for, it creates a higher margin for him. So we're designing to, to create value for him. And for our suppliers, uh, this is from, um, where is this? This is Brazil. This is one of our suppliers for uh, labels. When we, you know, make our processes, and uh, I was talking to Massimo last night about simplifying Coke, when we simplify, it actually allows them to create these labels much faster, much more efficiency, which creates more value for them. So we're thinking about them, actually, while we're designing. Of course, our bottlers. So our bottlers are the guys who actually manufacture and distribute uh, the Coke and everything else. So designing more efficiency into the process for them is how we create value for them. And lastly, uh, you know, who cares if we double the value of our, our business if we you know, double our impact on the planet? So we're always designing sustainably for the future. So when we talk about value, this is what we need to create. Shared value. Shared value across the value chain. So it's not just about creating more value for, for the consumer. It's about creating value all the way across the value chain. That's the opportunity for design. So how do we do that? How can we design to create shared value? Uh, unfortunately, we um, sometimes think about design in a very small way. Uh, this is a little poster for Fanta. Uh, but while it looks small, you can't believe the amount of meetings and amount of uh, email that would, would flow through our company around this one poster. You know, where do we put that? Which, which cartoon character should it be? Should it be a yellow background, orange background? Should we emphasize calcium, da-da-da? So, you know, we think very small about design and think about design as a moment. But in reality, this is what's there, right? So we talk about creating value, shared value. How much value is that poster creating for the consumer, for the guy who owns that little stand? This is in Indonesia. But the guy who owns that stand, how much value is that creating for our portfolio? By the way, all these things are produced by us. Some brand manager produced that one, and then that one, and that one. You know, this is all our doing. How much are we pulling people around to the cooler, which is way over there, to get a nice cold something? Not a lot, you know? So if we, you know, our, uh, our goal is to actually think big. In fact, thinking small is a thing that dilutes value or creates limited value. So our job is to help our company think big about design and the opportunity that design can create, uh, again, against this shared value. How do we do it? I love this. Actually, I was talking about this uh, last night with somebody. I can't remember. Um, but anyway, this is our secret. Legos. How many people know Legos? You have Legos. Everyone has Legos. I have three little girls, uh, 974, and they all have Legos. We have lots of Legos, by the way. This is the secret. So everything we design is based on this principle. Modular adaptable systems. Modular adaptable systems. Very simple concept. Our whole approach to design is based on this uh, philosophy. In fact, the way we talk about it is we win when we design systems that create shared value. The only way we can create shared value is thinking this way, modular components. Uh, a couple years ago, we redesigned uh, uh, our juice portfolio, uh, the packaging for our juice portfolio. We have about 100 brands in our juice portfolio. One of the biggest ones, a billion dollar one, is uh, Minute Maid. Most people know it. Uh, but anyway, we redesigned this package. We got a lot of press, and uh, it's worked out quite well. But what we didn't talk about is actually the system that's driving that. So we didn't just design the package, we designed a system, a very simple system. So in effect, we designed a system that allows us to market any of our juice brands and customize those around the world. We didn't design just one package, we designed all the packaging. You know, again, through this, this modular system. And this allows us to go to market very quickly with uh, products, new products that we haven't even dreamed of yet. So new combinations of fruit and vegetables. You know, with juice, you, can't, you can never tell what's available. It's not, you know, it's not the secret formula, it's, it's natural. So you don't ever know 
how many oranges are going to be produced, or apples and so forth around the world. Uh, the weather patterns dictate that. So anyway, we're, we are able to go to market very quickly with uh, variants that uh, are required by, uh, by nature. It also allows us to actually acquire new brands. So we do a lot of that as well. We buy this brand like we did uh, a couple years ago, Devay, in Latin America, and then assimilate it into our system and share the equity, you know, build equity into our, our portfolio. So again, very flexible. This is uh, last week I was in uh, Rio in uh, Brazil. And um, by the way, who knows uh, cashew apples? Yeah, cashew apple is very good, by the way. Never tasted that. But you can see the system at work there. It works very effectively. Uh, but we didn't design a package. We designed a system. This is Israel, Tel Aviv. And it's a little bit hard to see, but there's a cooler right there. Coolers are critical to our business, uh, as Dana knows. As it turns out, if, you, if we can keep it cold or make it cold, you're more likely to buy a Coke or something else. So our, it's critical for us to keep things cold and actually to, to provide coolers to this guy, to our retailers, to keep it cold for him. He can charge more and so forth. Uh, so coolers are king in our business. This is uh, Turkey. This is Istanbul. And it's important to this guy that it's not a Coke cooler, though. It's a juice cooler. There it's called Cafe. But it's important for him to, to pull the juice out of that juice cooler that somehow helps him sell more things in the morning commute. So it's critical for him to have a juice cooler, not a Coke cooler. So what do you do with that? Design a solution that's a system. So we actually designed a, a very modular system that has very, various levels of uh, features and functionality that provide uh, you know, the right kind of cooler for the right need. But again, we, we didn't design one cooler. We designed a system, much more efficient and so forth as well. Uh, this allows this guy, actually this is back to Brazil. I talked to that guy right there. Uh, you know, asked him how he liked that cooler. He said it's amazing. They had an old cooler that sat there for, I don't know how many years, but sat there. And just since they've installed that one cooler, he sold 30% more stuff through that cooler. Same product, same placement, same customers. He's selling more through that cooler. People love it, yeah, which is great. It's much more efficient as well. Used a lot, a lot less power for him, which impacts his utility bill. Uh, and here in uh, Argentina, this guy has an orange cooler. And then when we launched uh, what we call vitamin water in France, we were able to launch it through a whole system of uh, vitamin water coolers. But again, it's a very modular system. It's very quite easy to, to customize wherever we want to do this. Uh, and then in established markets, developed markets like the US and Japan, we have millions of coolers. Uh, we can take a sort of old pre-existing cooler and you know, adapt it to uh, actually have the same you know, look and feel as the rest of our coolers. So we haven't actually changed the components. We've just adapted the outside. And um, but anyway, we can create a common look and feel. For about $200, we can update any cooler to look like a, a new cooler. So again, we didn't design a cooler, we designed a system. China. Reminding people that Coke tastes great with food is fundamental to our business. It's how we built a business for the last 100 years. It's a very simple notion. You know, uh, red bean buns taste great with Coke. It's a very simple idea, but it's, it's important for us that we keep reminding people of that. Brazil. You know, reminding people that Coke tastes great with empanadas is critical for our business to keep growing, especially in developing markets. Same thing for India. This is uh, New Delhi. You know, uh, samosas and Coke go great together. You get the idea. So, um, I'm sorry, a couple more. Uh, Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo uh, Coke and baguettes go great together. And then uh, the U.S. pizza and Coke go great, go great together. So it's very important that we remind people constantly that, you know, Coke goes great with food. So what do you do with that? Uh, we designed this thing called Design Machine. Design Machine is an open source web-based platform that uh, where we've designed uh, um, clear standards around how we want people to shoot food, you know, clear photography standards and branding standards. But then we open it up and let people input into this different layouts and so forth so that a marketer or anybody else can go into Design Machine and, uh, you know, use a, uh, customize a layout that, they, that used to take four to six weeks. You know, they'd hire someone, uh, you know, they'd hire, hire someone, uh, brief the design agency, come back, look at stuff, so forth, four to six weeks it would be, would be fast in our business. Um, and this takes 10 minutes. Customize the layout like that, customize it, press send, goes to the printer and prints. So this has actually created massive efficiency for our company. Uh, we launched this about four years ago and it's uh, saved us about $80 million. Massive. But again, we didn't design a, a website, we designed a system. Uh, people like to take uh, our products on the go, right? We like to carry it around in this room or carry it around in our car. We like to take the portability of a beverage. It's great, right? Until you drink it all. And then it's tempting to think of it as waste. You know, what used to be great immediately turns into something that's not so great. So what do you do with that? Well, we looked at, uh, we, have, we have massive programs around recycling and we have the largest recycling plant in the, in the world. It's in the, actually in the US. Uh, we 
you know, this is systemic for us. Recycling is, is critical to our business. But uh, we're looking at other ways that, that we can repurpose the plastic. One of those is this. You've seen a lot of chairs. Actually, I couldn't help but chuckle, but um, every time you go to a design conference, you see a lot of chairs for some reason. It's interesting. Anyway, we didn't, uh, we didn't design a chair. This is a perfect chair. This is the uh, Navy chair, designed in the 40s by Emico. We just changed the material. So we, uh, we call this the 111 chair. We partnered, collaborated with Emico, and uh, we use 111 PET bottles for the, the plastic that goes into making that chair. It's amazing. We, uh, you know, again, we created it, uh, not just one chair, one Coke red chair, which took a long time, by the way, to get the red right. Anyway, um, a lot of different colors. So as a consumer, you can go and buy one of these, about $200 US, and buy one. Now, that's good. That's a, a nice story, good story. But the big win is with our customers, customers like McDonald's, who can take this chair, do what they need to do in their environment, but use a lot of them, right? So it's a win-win. It's a win for McDonald's, win for us, win for the planet. But again, we didn't design a chair, we designed a system, right? <laughs> So we win when we design systems that create shared value. That's our approach. Uh, imagine how big this could be. Imagine if design wasn't about a moment. Everyone in this room, imagine if design wasn't about a moment. Imagine if design was a, a movement. It's not a moment, it's a movement. We have about 3,000 marketers in our company. What if all those marketers thought this way? They all thought this way in systems. We have uh, about 650,000 people who work for our bottlers, much like uh, Lupita here, who hangs the signage. What if 650,000 people thought this way? Design thinking, call it whatever you want, but imagine if she thought this way. And then we have, again, 20 million customers. What if that guy thought this way? This is the opportunity. So we talk about value, this is the opportunity. It's not about design, it's about design collaborating with business. This is Chris, our, our newest designer. I was just in Brazil with her last week. This is Chris and this is Pedro. Pedro is our a sales guy. It's about the two of them coming together and collaborating to win, right? So we believe we've started a movement. Thank you.